So we're going to talk about um, areas and distances. And so in this section, we're going to uh, throw in these sections sections uh, 5.1 and 5.2. I had 5.1 and 5.2 together and then I split it apart, um, back apart, just so it's just innocent. Um, the area problem. And so here, the derivatives, so derivatives are used to find the slope. And so when we have, when we have our little stuff, we have a derivative and that tells us our slope, which is our instantaneous rate of change. But now we're gonna ask it another question. How much area is underneath this curve? Right, and that seems like um, how much area is underneath the curve. And this ends up being super useful. And we're actually going to start by doing like cute little rectangles, and that's called the Riemann sum of it. And this ends up being very useful. So if I knew the velocity at all points, the area underneath the curve is how much distance I traveled, right? And so, or if I knew, you know, say this was my income over time, what's under the curve is how much money I've made during that time, right? Or if this was the energy flow of some project, that's how far, you know. And so in, integration is just as useful as differentiation. And so it helps us to solve a lot of mathematical problems and a lot of other problems. So we're gonna start building the foundation of this. And to do this, we're gonna, we're gonna use, we're gonna start using triangles. So we're gonna kind of blunt point trauma of this. And this is how it all came about. Is this how you really do it in practice? It's gonna seem terrible because I'm gonna teach you the hard way today and then the easier way tomorrow or on Wednesday. And you'll almost never do the hard way, but the reason you learn how to do it the hard way is that way when you do it the easy way, what you're doing makes sense of what you're trying to do, right? Um, it makes sense of what you're trying to do. And, the, and what I mean by that is by doing it the hard way, you figure out, oh, this is what I'm trying to get to, right? And then you'll come back. All right, so let's do this. All right, so we're going to do this um, at least two. So we're going to do it from the right side and left. So here, let me, let me use this. I wanted three figures here so I can kind of. So here we have y equals x squared between 0 and and so this is one, this is one. We're going to kind of split this up. I'm going to just try to find these areas. And now there's a couple ways of trying to do this. Um, there's a couple ways of trying to do this. And one of them, one of the, one of the more, and we're going to split them for us. We're going to try to find this. And so we're going to try to estimate this area here. So let's just do it, um, but we actually need to pick points in order to do that. So we're gonna do the first one. I'm gonna say one, two, three, and four. This is at one, and this will here would be at a half then, right? And this is at one at one. And so what we're first gonna do is just take these triangles and we're gonna do what they call a, a, right, a right estimate. Right, and so we're just going to make little triangles here. So we're going to take whatever the rightmost part of our square and make these rectangles. And we're just going to add up the area. So I want to find the area underneath the parabola, and we're going to use two different ways. So here we're going to call this the right. Um, we're going to use the right side. Um, and so let's do this. So from, so let's, what's this, what's the area of this triangle? So or the area of this rectangle right here. And to find that, so we're gonna say the area here is equal to, we're gonna use R4. Um, let me use that. Let me keep what your book is doing. Okay. So each one of these lengths right here, seeing how I split from zero to one into four equal pieces, each one of these lengths is gonna have a length of a fourth, right? So it's gonna be one fourth. So that's our base for each of them. So let's go ahead and put that in. So that's our base for each of them. And then here, we're gonna have our function value at here, this will be a function value at a fourth, right? This will be our function value at a half. This will be our function value at uh, three fourths and then at one. 
It's our function value. It's just x squared. So our function, so we're going to take in a fourth and we're going to square it. Here we're going to take a half and we're going to square it because that's where I'm at. Here I'm at a fourth. Here I'm at a half. Here I'm at three fourths. So I'm going to square three fourths. Square it. Oops. Square it. And that will give me this point right here. So, or this length right here. So here, a fourth times a fourth squared gives me this triangle. A fourth times a half squared gives me not this triangle, but this rectangle, sorry. A fourth times three fourths squared gives me this rectangle. And a fourth times one squared, which of course is one, will give me this rectangle. All right. Um, and you just crunch through this number. I'm we're gonna, not gonna watch me type in the number that I have in front of us. So here it's, 1530 seconds or approximately equal to 0 0.04667 or six seven six eight seven five. Sorry. All right, so that's one way of doing it, but we can do it another way. And so here we can do it from the left side, right? And notice that guessing this way, I'm always overestimating. Right? At least in this curve, I'm overestimating. It's an overestimate of what's here. Because all this is extra. All this right here is extra. Actually, this right here. All this is extra, right? And this right here. All this is overestimating. So I'm always overestimating. So let's go back to this. Let's do it again. And here I'm going to have a fourth. I'm going to add in a fourth half, three-fourths, and one. And this time we're going to choose the left point. We're going to choose the leftmost point. And so here I just have a flat line here. This. Here I'm going to choose here and draw a triangle. Here I'm going to do this and draw it. Not triangles, rectangles. I'm going to say triangle instead of rectangle all day. No, no. And so let's do this. And so here we have L4. So the leftmost even some is what we'll call these eventually. So here's a fourth. And then here, the left point here is zero. So it'd be zero squared plus a fourth, because that's the length here. And then this height right here would be one fourth squared, because that's the function value here. The function value here is a fourth squared plus a fourth, one half squared plus a fourth, three fourth squared. And if I crunch through all that, I'm only going to get 730 seconds, which is approximately equal to 0 0.12. All right, so we know whatever the true area, whatever this true area is here, is somewhere between these two. 0 0.12. I know it's somewhere in between here. So here, I'm underestimating, right? I'm underestimating by all this. Well, is there a way to make a better estimate? Is there something I can do to be better at this? And the answer is yeah, right? I can just cut it up into more and more triangles. Or more triangles. I'm going to say triangles all day. I come from a numerics background. We use triangles to estimate everything, not rectangles, because triangles have a lot better property for numerics. <laughs> I just do. So here, if I could do the same thing again, I could just do tiny, 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 tiny little ones, right? And then here, this would be, well, that's one. And so I can do this over and over and over and over again. And so here I can just increase the number of the right triangles. And so here, if I increase this to n, and I take the limit as n approaches infinity, I'm going to get this ends up to being a third. Now, how do we get to that number? It's a little bit hard to see, but let's just look at our n for a short bit and just kind of look at a little graph. So let's pretend n was 10. We get 0 0.3. 385. So here, remember, Rn is an overestimate. 
I did it as 50, I get 0 0.3434 roughly. And if I did it at 100, I'll get 0 0.33835. And if I did it at 1,000, I'm getting 0 0.33835. And so notice here as I run this to infinity, kind of like we did our limits last time, I'm going to get close to a third. Okay. And so this is the basis of how we're going to do integration for now, for the first two chapters. Integration wants to find out what's the area underneath the curve. So we're just going to split it up into rectangles. We're going to choose some point. Um, we're going to just, and almost, almost all the time you make the rectangles um, the same length, right? This length is always the same. You can do it while it's not, and there's reasons to do it, but we won't get into that in this class. And so the more the more rect, uh, rectangles I make, the more, the more accurate it is, right? And then um, sometimes we'll overestimate, sometimes we'll underestimate, sometimes um, another one where you'll take the midpoint, right? You'll do the midpoint, and that tries to get it as a little bit better of an estimate, right? Most of the time. And so this is what we'll be doing. So let me leave that up for a second. Let you copy it. Can you show the whole bit again? Yes, I can. There we go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I think I accidentally. Okay, so we've, we've concluded this, but now let's show it kind of mathematically. All right, so r to the n, right? So r to the n. So our length here was 1 over n. And then we had 1 over n squared. And so here, if we're just doing r to the n. And so we want to show this, right? We show roughly, kind of in a hand wavy way. Let's do it kind of more of a mathematical way. Now. One over n times two to the n squared plus one over n plus three to the n squared. Onward to we have one over n or n over n. And so let's go back to what we did. So here, if we had four, we had a fourth over one fourth squared, a fourth over two fourths or a half squared, a fourth times three fourths squared. And if I made this five, this would be one fifth times one fifth squared plus two fifths squared. And so in generically, this is what we're doing. Well, what can I pull out here? Well, what can I pull out here? Well, let's pull this out, right? I have an N over N squared everywhere. So let's just pull that out safely. And I have one over n cubed, right? Because I'll have this end and two of these ends. And I'm going to multiply all that by one squared plus two squared plus three squared, all the way up to n squared. OK. And then you may or may not know this off the top of your head. My guess is probably not. If you sum up n squares, you get this um, is the formula for it. It's something nice to have in your pocket for now, but nothing too worried, too much worried about. So I have this, but now I have everything in terms of n, so I can do a lot of nice, clean, simplifying things. Let's do that. Let's do that. So let's do that. So here we have r to the n equals n over n plus 1. But notice this n can cancel out one of those n's. And so this makes a square. So let's let's go ahead and do that before we go to the next one. 2n plus 1 over 6n squared. Let's go ahead and uh, multiply that out. So here we'll get 2n squared. Um, oops, that's fine. Yeah. 
uh, two n square plus uh, we get two n plus so plus three n plus one all over six n squared. Now let's take the limit. Let's actually do that now. So now we have all that done. We're gonna take the limit as r n as n goes to infinity. Which is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity for two to the n squared plus three n plus one all over six to the n squared. So what's this limit? What's this limit right here? Do we know what this is? Remember how to take a limit of a, of a rational function? What do we do? Let's see if one person will give you the answer. Man could dream, right? <laughs> so remember what we do? Divide by the largest, thank you. So here we divide by the largest. So this is n squared. So if I divide that out, that's the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of two over six plus three n plus one over n squared plus, and that's it, right? So this goes to zero, this goes to zero, this goes to a third. And so now we've mathematically shown, right? So we, here we kind of tabular, you know, shown that it goes to a third, and here we mathematically shown it goes to a third. But this can be a lot of work to do all the time. It can be, right? To set up all this, do all the sum, do all this other stuff. But it's important to know what we're doing before we do it. So. So an area of a region under a graph is, if it's a continuous function, the limit, then the area is, oops, I forgot to say the area is equal. The area is equal to the limit as we take Rn to infinity, all right? And so we can choose just to do the Rn. Um, and that's found by taking the function value times um, the delta axis, and that's just the limit of adding all those in. Okay, so let's do, oops, I think my little minus e to the x had a problem. This is minus e to the, e to the minus x between 0 and 2. We're going to use the endpoints to find the expression. Uh, we're not going to calculate them, right? We just want to find what the expression is, and that's what this is setting it up, right? Um, And then we're going to use, um, and then we're going to estimate this. So we're going to find using right endpoints. So we're going to use this Rn. We're going to find the expression for a as a limit. So we're going to try to find the area. We're going to set it up as a limit. We're not going to evaluate the limit. And then we're going to estimate the area by using sample points uh, to be the midpoints and sub and poor sub intervals. So basically what we did last time. Okay. So. Let's let's go ahead and do that. So let's do part A first. So here, uh, what does our graph look like? Our graph looks like this. And so it's going to be e to the minus x. So it's going to start at 1, if you remember right. That's 1. And then it's just going to go to here, where it's just wherever this is 1 over e is, right? And we have it going to 1. So between, oops, not 1. And then we're going to go a little bit further to 2. So we want to figure out what this area is. All right, so we're going to set this up using right endpoint. So the right endpoint, so Rn, so no matter how many little blocks we break it into, it's going to be 1 over n. Um, hold on, let me be very clear about this. So we're going to divide this up into subintervals. Uh, so if we choose n intervals, our intervals are going to be, let's see if I can say this correctly. So here I, I change our, our little delta x. Let me do this very mathematically for you. 2 minus 0. So this is the length we're going to travel. 
we're traveling two units, right? We're going to divide it into n subsections. So each of the little delta x's is going to be 2 over n. So our little triangles here, our little length here. So if we have n of these, each one of these are going to be 2, 2 over n long, right? And then if I add up n of them, I'll get 2. So this would be 2 over n long, this would be 2 over n long. So what's our function value here? We're going to pick the function value at the end. And so, um, and so here, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and use this. This right here. So the area is equal to the, the n goes to infinity. Infinity. Oops. Sorry. Sorry about that. Let me, let me back up for one second. Limit as n approaches infinity of Rn, which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. Here we're going to just do a function. So our function value at x1, n plus x plus dot 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 dot. Our function value at xn plus n plus x. And so we're going to plug this in. So what is our delta x? Our delta x here is 2. I'm going to leave myself too much room. Um, let me leave myself room over here to do that. Make sure I very much do read that one. I right, saw so our, our, our delta x are 2n, right? So this would be the limit. The limit as n approaches infinity. Right here. So our function, our first function value would be at what? It'd be at e to the minus 2n, right? That's where we're at here, times uh, 2 over n, because that's our length, plus our next function value. Our next function value will be at 4n, or e to the minus 4 over n, 2 over n. So we're going to just keep doing that until um, we hit e to the value of minus 2 over, because here at the very end, we're going to have minus 2, because we're at 2, times 2 over n. So let's go ahead and clean this up. I think that's all your book lines for this. So here are the limit as n approaches infinity. So we have 2n everywhere. So let's go ahead and pull that out, 2 times n times the summation of from n equal to 1 to, I guess I should use a different, <laughs> that's a terrible notation. We're going to add up all the things of e to the 2i over n. So when it's the first one, it'll be 1, it'll be, yeah, here at 1, at 2, I get 4 over n. The next one will be at 6 over n. And so I hit all the way at the end, which is 2n over n, which is 2n over n, of course, is just minus 2. And so here's the formula for the area. Uh, is that t? Oh, no, this is a plus. This is a plus. So let me make this clear. So we have this, it's this right here. Plus, and dot, dot, plus. Good question. Sometimes, usually when I do T's, I'll have them have a, it's not that much difference. Once upon a time, this was my T, this was my plus. And once again, once upon a time, that was my Y, this was my X. <laughs> so I do Y's this way now. <laughs> okay. How do you find Delta X? So Delta X, so here's delta x. So delta x, um, delta x in general is found by the following. It is whatever your ending point minus your beginning point all over your n. Where b is your end, end point, a is your start point, and n is the number of times, you, a number of, um, um, it's this number of sub intervals.
So that's how that works out. And so here, let's actually do a quick, a quick uh, thing. So we're going to do a midpoint. So we're going to use an M4. And that's going to be, so our delta x, so our delta x in this case, our delta x is, so in this case, let's go ahead and let me, let me do it up here. So, oh, here we go. So we have two over, two over n. So for our case, if I had n equal to our four, our delta x is equal to two over four or a half, right? Equal to a half. So according to this, so here we're going to, instead of doing right, we're going to do middle points. And so here we're going to have, um, let me just kind of, I guess we should just write it out. It'll be, so where's the midpoint? So let me, let me redraw this real quick. Um, so I can do four spots. Okay. I'm going to reuse this just, just so I can use four spots. So you don't draw this on your notes. That's fine. I just want to do it visually so you know what's going on. I should have left myself. So here I have one, here I have uh, three, three halves, here I have two, and here I have one half. And so here I've divided this into four subintervals, right? One, two, three, four. And this time, what I'm going to choose for my point will be the midpoint. I'm going to choose the midpoint in between these three. Um, so some of it should be slightly above it, some should be slightly below it. I can draw. Okay. And so I'm choosing the midpoint. So some's above, some below. And so here this will occur at a fourth, right? This will occur at oops, three fourths. This will occur at uh, five fourths. And this one will occur at seven fourths. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in my function value at a fourth, multiply by my delta x, which is a half, plus my function value at three fourths, plus my value here, or my delta x, which is still a half, plus my function value at five fourths, plus times my, my length, which is one half, plus my function value here at seven fourths. So the function value at seven fourths times a half. Okay, and so here I've split it up into these rectangles using, I guess let me draw this a little bit better, right? So some above, some below, some above, some below, some below, some below. Okay. So I'm using these rectangles right here. And I have four of them. And so here I'm just using this and I plug in the function values, okay? And so this is equal to E, I'm kind of low on area. So let me just, so this would be E to the minus one fourth times E to the minus one fourth plus E to the minus three fourths. Because here, if I just plug it in, my function here is E to the minus X. So I just plug in the fourth, three fourths plus E to the minus, um, Five fourths plus e to the minus seven fourths. Now it's all times a half. So here I'm just pulling these out. Or pulling this here, pulling this here, pulling this here, and pulling out the half. And then if I roughly crunch the numbers, I'll get zero point eight six three two. Okay. All right. I'll let you guys copy that as I. So all we're doing in this section, as you guys are copying it down, is we're just taking the area underneath the curve. We're going to set some delta x, some change in x, and what we're going to pick a change in x. And this, for, for now, we're just picking a change of x, often four, right? Um, we're going to pick either the left point, the leftmost point. So we're going to take the function value when we first start that delta, that little rectangle. We're going to take the midpoint, so in between, which tends to be the better one. And we're going to also take the one at the end of it. Um, 
which which is called the right one. So you'll have a big L, big M, or big that, and the little subscript is how many rectangles we're making for that. And then we're going to use that to estimate it. Um, we're also setting up how the integrals work, or not the yeah the integrals, just don't know how many integrals yet. And by as a summation of all these, as we take n to be infinity, we can we'll get the true limit. All right, so let's talk about distance problem. So here, um, last time we wanted to we use the antiderivatives to kind of crunch through this, but now let's actually kind of crunch through a thing. So the distance problem is like, if I know velocity, can I tell where I'm at at any point? Yeah, right. Um, and so your book makes a whole different section all of this, which is fine. So suppose an odom the odometer in a car is broken, you want to estimate the travel distance in a 30 second time interval. Uh, which this, which takes the speed and takes speed varying every five seconds to a quarter of a tape. So here, we're going to do this. Now, one of the things just to be super careful of, and that's why I'm kind of glad they did this problem, is notice you want to have kind of the units the same. This is time in seconds, but the velocity is given miles per hour, which you would expect on a car. So if I want to do this in anything that makes sense, I'm going to switch one mile per hour. So one mile per hour into feet per second. So it's 528 feet um, per mile and 300 um, 360 seconds um, per hour, or 3,600 seconds per hour. Wait, there's an easier method than this? No way. <laughs> when we get to 5.3, you're all just going to hate me. I'm just going to put it out there. It's like, why would we do it this way? <laughs> I promise you. It's important and I'm required to teach it. <laughs> um, so we're going to kind of go through the hard way this way. I may, I may, may have this this week be 5 1 and 5 2 and then do 5 3, 5 4, and 5 5 next week. Um, let me see how, let me see how the rest of the day goes. Okay. Do we need a feet? Could you leave it in miles per second? You could. But if I switch it over, um, the numbers, the numbers just become, I'd have a really, 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 really small, um, let's see how I can say this. This is roughly close to one, right? 5,000 over six, or 5,000 over 3.5.2 thousand over 3.6 thousand. It's not too far from one. If I had this, if I left in miles per second, I'd be dividing by this, and then I have a long string of decimals. Does that make sense? And so that's why it it seems like it's more work, but it's actually not because you just have less. So here we're going to have velocity in feet per second. And this is already pre-calculated, so this will be about twenty-five. This will be about thirty-one. This will be about thirty-five. 43, 47, 46, and 41, comparatively. So how would I figure out how far I traveled? Because here I have some sort of graph in my velocity of feet per second and starts out at 17, kind of goes up to 21, 22, 23, 20, come back down a little bit, right? And I'm traveling for 30 seconds. Well, how would I roughly guess what they ate this? Well, here I'm just going to guess every every five seconds, right? 10, 15, 20, 20, 25. So my scale is a little long. And I'm just going to choose. And here I'm just going to choose the leftmost point, right? Just because then I can just go straight to what I have. So here I can just do this down. Um, let's 
So here, let's just do, let's just do a left one just because we haven't done it. So here at zero seconds. So here, if I'm doing a left, left of not four, how many would I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Six. So I have seven points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm only gonna use either the left or the right. So here, if I use the left, it would be 17 times five, right? Going 17 feet per second times five seconds, because that's my, my delta X in this case, right? And this would not be four. Just go back. Just keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Come on, the right one. This won't be four. This will be six, right? L six or R six. And so for the left point, it would be seventeen times five oops, plus twenty one times five plus twenty four times five. Oops, I'm pulling the wrong numbers on me. I fix all the numbers and then I don't use them. Here would be 25. because I'm choosing the leftmost point and the length here is times five. Here would be 31 um, times five. Plus um, 35 times five. Plus forty-three times five plus forty-seven. That's not four. Forty-seven times five plus forty-six times five, and so that would give me one thousand one hundred and thirty-five. And you can do the same thing with this one. This one, instead of starting here, we're going to start here. So we're going to start at this point over here. 31 times 5 all the way up to 28 because we're going to choose these five or not 28 but 31 oops i'm choosing the wrong point and here we're going to get this is about one so here if i choose the left point i can get this and if i choose the right point all right. <laughs>